I'm gonna show you how to identify these type of trades so that way you can take advantage of them the next time they show up. I asked the community what type of videos you guys would like to see and Dell Nash, thank you so much for giving your comment below. He wanted to see how I'm able to identify patterns, draw my own lines and so I wanna get into that today so that way you can figure that out on your own and find your own success. So I'm gonna share my screen, let's get started. Now the first trade I want to go into is BBIG on January 19th. Now the main thing I want you to do is look at this execution here on the chart. Pause if you need to, study it. And in a minute here I'm going to go over the actual chart in detail and what I saw and what I was thinking to help draw levels so that way you can potentially draw your own levels when you see a chart that you like. The key is you need to be trading what you like what draws your attention. Because if it draws your attention, that means you may be familiar with it. And if you're familiar with it, then you could have more confidence in it than if you just pick some random chart that I picked. This is January 19th. We had overextension play. Now this is my bread and butter setup. This is the setup that helped me get consistent. And it's one of my favorites. I mean, it's just, it's just an easier setup to play because it's obvious it's overextended from 240 to 540. And then we have a first red day. Now, when you go into a different, you know, I like to look at all time frames. When you go into different time frames, what I'm looking for is trends. And you can see a pretty clear trend here right off the bat. Very clear trend. So when I see this trend, I don't want to be short in it. In fact, you might want to long on this trend. Now, at this point, I wouldn't long it because it's overextended. It's not a play for me. It doesn't mean it's a wrong play, but for me, it's not. It's not the play. But on the day it cracks, which was this day, I am interested. And I am looking at key areas of interest. Like I'm looking at this level. I'm looking at this level. And of course, I'm looking at high a day. Now, the whole reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to get an idea of where the stock could go and as well as like support levels. Resistance becomes support. So these are levels that I need to pay attention to. So that way, whenever I decide to take profits, I'm taking profits at key targets rather than just random. Now, on this trade, just because it cracked doesn't mean, I mean, if I could, if I was there, I probably would have shorted it. But I wasn't. This was ec extra early in the morning. This is 6 a.m. my time, which is 7 a.m. market time. 6 a.m., I'm not at the desk ready to trade. I'm not. Um, it's just not going to happen. So in this case, it you know tanked, and that's a good sign. We tanked, and then we popped. So what I'm looking for next is when can I get confident and hit this with more size? Because I'm already attacking it. If you remember that chart... I was attacking it on the way up because ideally I wanted to risk around this level, this 550 mark. And when we started to fail, if we zoom in here, I'm looking for other key points of interest. I'm looking for levels that show me that, hey, we're turning. And in this instance, we start to turn. And this is where I start to slam. Now, if you look uh, at the chart that I executed on, I actually slammed right here full size because at this moment i'm thinking the stock lost momentum when we try to squeeze the 550 we didn't get there which is where i wanted to go my max size and instead when we start to turn and break i said you know what i'm, I'm going to go ahead and take a position here because this position with full size with a tighter risk uh, i'm willing to take that now you never know what's going to work i don't know just because I took this position doesn't mean I knew it was going to work. I had no clue. In fact, you'd see on the chart that I showed earlier that I was getting chopped around. It happens. But what kept me alive is my risk management. That is what's so important. That's why we always talk about this. When I say we, I mean traders who are consistent. You'll always hear them focus on what you're comfortable with and risk management. Because it's not about the money you make, it's about the money you keep. And that is so true because we've seen so many people make a lot of money and lose it all this year. It's happened to a lot. Now I want to go over BBIG on January 26, where I tried to long and was wrong and then flipped short. Now in this play, 
If you're curious and you want to take your time to analyze the trade, make sure to press pause because I now want to go over the chart itself on Thinkorswim and go over what I was thinking about, what I saw, and why I placed the trade and why I switched bias. So here's the daily chart of BBIG. I always want to start with the daily because the daily is important to me. It kind of tells me what's going on. It gives me the big picture. It shows me where everyone is at. If you recall, on January 19th, this is the day I shorted it and found a nice backside play. But on this day, I'm trying to long. And why is that? Well, if I'm shorting an overextended play, then it just makes sense when it's overextended to the downside that I may look for a bounce. In some cases, I do find that bounce. But in this day, I was wrong. And if we zoom in, let's go ahead and zoom in here. I'm going to show you why I thought it was a long. Same reason why I think things are short. You'll see this downtrend line that broke. So now I'm thinking we could be on the reversal end. And then you also see, you see the support zone? This support zone right here became resistance, became support here, and then became support. So I'm thinking, you know what? This could become a nice long play. And then if we zoom in for a little bit and go to the one minute on the day of the play, I'm actually seeing that we have a little trend for me. Now, when I see this trend, I'm thinking this could be the reversal day because of big picture. And because of the hourly, the 30 minute, when I showed you earlier that it was breaking the downtrend. So because of those two things and we're holding support, this could become a good long. Doesn't mean we know what's going to happen. It just gives me more confidence that the odds may be stacked in my favor. In this case, I was wrong. I bought right here in the 350 area, risking right below the line. And if you recall, I got stopped out right away. Check this out. You see here that I actually got stopped out immediately. And this is where risk management is very important. As I mentioned earlier, that's the only way we're going to be able to survive long enough to thrive so we can become successful. And once you make it, whatever that is for you, you got to keep it. And so risk management is super important. So make sure that you don't forget about that. So once it cracked, I didn't immediately just decide to short right away. In fact, I wanted to wait because two reasons. I mean, we have support here, here, and here from earlier. So because of that, I just don't really see good risk reward at this point. Because if I short, you know, where's my reward? Like 10 cents down? That's just not good risk management. Instead, I wanted to wait, give it time to set up. And I'm glad I did because it ended up setting up later. And it shows a good entry. Now, if you recall the trade that we showed you earlier, you see that entry where I got in with very tight risk reward. I was risking like two, three, maybe five cents at max. And it dropped a good over 20 cents. So because of that, that is a good risk reward. That's five to one, four to one, three to one, depending on how you exit it. But this is an example of me waiting for it to tell me we held it in the support. Now I think we're short again. And then we built a nice little trend so I can short and have entries risking off of this trend line. This is something that's really important because when I enter here, I'm not sure it's going to work, but if it doesn't, I can cut it right above the line. And that's super important. Now there's sometimes where I'll wait, I will give it some room. Like I was short here at 319. I might give it to like 325, 330. And then when it shows me some rejection, I might tighten up. So that's how I'm thinking when I'm going about this trade. So make sure if you have any examples that are similar or can help some other people by sharing your chart in the comments or on my Twitter and tagging me saying, hey, this is an example that could help others. Really appreciate that because it helps grow the community for the better. And if you can do us all a favor and just share the show with someone that you know, we'd really appreciate it because it can really help us grow. Now let's go over GLW. GLW is another play in January on the 26th that I tried longing. And ended up taking a small, I think it was a small loss or break even or a small gain. Same thing. But when it broke, I decided to switch my bias again. Now, the month of January 2022 is, in my opinion, a short seller's market. So because of that, a lot of the plays I'm showing you right now are to the short side. However, you can still see that I'm still using the same style of trading. Draw my own lines, my horizontal support and resistance, trends to determine which direction I should play. I'm not trying to be one strict side or the other. I want the chart to tell me. 
So with that being said, make sure to press pause to check out this chart so that way you can analyze it and remember it so when I review it on Thinkorswim, you can kind of follow along. Now here's the day that it gapped up. This is the day I tried longing and then I switched short. Now when I look at this daily chart, I immediately see that it's a breakout, right? I'm thinking, okay, we're breaking out. That's very clear to me. Now when we zoom in, you can see, hopefully you can see, if you can, I'm gonna show you. On this one minute chart, you can see a nice little trend line. So why am I long in this? I'm long in this because it's bullish. We're breaking out. Not only do we break out and we set a new high, came back, we held the trend line, came back, held it again. I'm thinking this could be a nice first day for the move and potentially carry on to the next day. So I'm looking to long. I'm looking to find a position. And I was longing along this trend line. If you remember, check this out. You look here, you'll be able to see I'm longing near the trend. Now, it's not always perfect. Like I said, I'm not perfect. But the closer I can get to that trend line, the better for risk reward. But because I'm thinking this has a potential big move ahead of itself, I'm okay giving a little bit of risk here for the reward. And it looked like it was going to work for a minute until it didn't. You can see here when we popped up, I'm thinking take a little profits because there's resistance right at this zone. It makes sense. I'm getting in at this lower level. So why not take some profits at the upper level? Taking just a little bit off because the real goal is 41.20, 41.10 and above. But when we fail and have a hard rejection, this is not a good sign. When I see this hard rejection here, I'm now thinking this is a short because we just try to squeeze and go higher. But instead we showed that this area is actually resistance because we couldn't hold above it. Instead, we just tanked below it. When that happens, I'm actually thinking, okay, this is probably short. And now I have a key area that I can risk off of. You can either choose this previous high or you can choose the 40-20 level, depending on how tight your, your risk you want. And you can short all of these pops, which is what I did. And it ended up working out really well. And because I cut my loss and was able to manage my risk, and it'll be a nice play. And you can easily draw a trend line here and say, when should it get out? You can get out right here or right here. It's all up to you. I was hoping this thing would fail and just continue to melt, but it didn't. Um, even though we broke this key support area, it, it didn't melt and that's trading. You don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. We just have odds, probability, and that's it. It's all random. And that's something you always gotta remind yourself. And I'm saying this out loud to myself as well, because if you just think you know what's going to happen next, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to get in your head and you're not going to let plays work. So here's the chart again. So make sure to review this chart. Go back and review the other ones as well, because I think this can help you kind of build a thesis, build a plan. So that way you can kind of see where are important levels, where are trends, where are support and resistance. Good luck.